effective, tight bowling, but for that quite magnificent catch, as good as any I've seen this summer. <laughs> And for the first of these Texaco One Day Internationals between England and New Zealand, we had a hot and sunny morning and before too long a very large crowd. Lovely summer's day. And England left out of their squad, Athy named as 12th man and Phil Edmonds. We saw the recall of Alan Lamb, Richard Ellison, Graham Dilley, and Jack Richards, the Surrey wicketkeeper batsman, back for his first international in over four years. And on the New Zealand side, captained by Jeremy Coney, we've got their great all-rounder, Richard Hadley, due in at number seven. And they're playing two spinners, Evan Gray, slow left arm, and John Bracewell, off breaks. Two captains came out to toss, the pitch firm and dry, one of the newly laid pitches here at Headingley, where traditionally there's usually a bit of help for the seam bowlers. And being humid, it might swing as well. Anyway, Jeremy Coney won the toss and elected to bat first. So here we go, in the fourth over, the score is eight for no wicket, and it's Neil Foster bowling to the left-hander, John Wright. Excellent running this by the New Zealand pair, demonstrating from the word go that uh, they're going to pick up all the little singles they can. is the first to go trapped in front trying to force around the onside but beaten by the movement yes this really looked plumb just coming back a little bit hit him just above the roll and i think probably would have hit the top of the middle stump. fine piece of ball dilly is now about to bowl to right it goes good effort A tremendous effort this by Benson very firmly struck by John Wright and a dive and I suspect it went in and the fact that his arm hit the ground at the same time probably jerked it out Ken Rutherford is the new player tell from behind but to me that looked a very chancy run Alan Lamb one of the better fielders having a shot at the stumps and oh he would have been miles out if he'd hit Derek Pringle coming in to bowl his second over that's better That really was the best of uh, John Wright. No flourish, you see, no follow through. Just a very firm bat and good timing. Now well, that's a very good piece of cricket by John Wright. The straight drive, first of all, persuaded Derek Pringle to pull it back in length a bit, but he pulled it back too far. And Wright anticipating very quick into that pull shot. And Mike Gatling now bringing Richard Ellison on at the Kersal Lane end. That's uh, quite right, that decision, because there's a lovely breeze coming up from Fine Leg and a bit of humidity. Oh, well, how easy can you take it? Beautifully bold. Object lesson of line and length. And can bother for this goal. You can see the dismissal again from Richard Ellison. There, pitching round about off the middle and doing just enough. Two or three inches, that's plenty. Just enough to beat the edge of the bat. The party crew is probably the best known of the T20 
Zealand batsman, yet still only 23 years old. Right, we're ready. Pringle to Crow. He's off the mark with a fine shot, and uh, that'll get there easily. What a fast outfield. Very scarcely hit that. He's away. Oh, beautifully bowled. Richard Ellison just getting that movement away from the back. It's the sort of bowl that bowled Ken Rutherford, the New Zealand opener. might consider himself just a shade fortunate there. Batsman alone to get inside edges onto the stumps, but to drag it back that far requires a bit of fortune, but who would deny that? You see that dismissal again here. Marty Gra reached for it, the bat at 45 degrees, bottom edge. And he was really off balance when he hit that shot. He, I mean, he's such a marvellous player, Martin Crow, but really he was badly off balance there. But now Jeremy Coney, he's the, the skipper of the New Zealand party. Well, that looked to be a catch. It looked to be a chance down the left side for Jack Richards. And that just faint touch, certainly a deflection there and certainly quite comfortable into Jack Richards' hands there but he finished up really just getting his left hand to it, not getting two hands on it which he really ought to have done Well that was a fine take and that's out it's beautifully caught by Jack Richards Inside edge, and the ball not truly carrying, it was just dying away on Jack Richards, and John Wright is gone. Yeah, it's a very fine catch, this. Bit of movement, thickish inside edge, and a very fine catch there. Certainly as good as you could see from the wicketkeeper, just carrying and full stretch to his right arm. This is just the thing the New Zealanders need. Gain a little bit of confidence, not a great delivery. Short, wide. And Jeremy Coney really does give the ball a solid crack. was the fielder, hustled around, gathered in brilliantly, only a short boundary on that side, Jeff Crow made it back. A marvellous piece of fielding this by Graham Gooch, quickly thrown, and very, very close indeed. Gooch's first appearance at the bowling crease in these uh, limited overs internationals this summer. Certainly a little deflection there, and disappointing for Graham Gooch. That's the second one this morning Jack Richards has probably put down. That's Jeremy Coney, the New Zealand captain, and this is John Embury. Oh, tremendous feeling. What a wonderful throw. Oh, Mike Gatting. First ball after lunch, Jeremy Coney is run out. And that was brilliant. Familiar figure of Richard Hadley now making his way to the middle. But that was quite breathtaking, I think. 
important fact was that Jeremy Coney hit the ball to Gatting's left hand, and that's why he decided to go. Gatting, of course, right-handed, but already Gatting had decided what the plan was. But to spin out of a turn like that and accurately hit what one and a half stumps he could see, quite sensational. I mean, Coney was only just in the frame. To be Graham Dilley, who put it in that fine spell at the start. Oh, that's a fine tickle, and in one day cricket, that nearly always brings four runs. Oops, well, it's, oh, that's an amazing run. Well, to have seen the run there was quite something. It was Jeff Crow who saw it. It looked to be absolutely nothing there. Well, what do you call it? An easy single round. <laughs> Call, send him back. Ellison throws, and my word, Jeff Crow did very well indeed to get back. Once Richard Adley had called, he should certainly have gone because Jeff Crow was coming to the danger, and he really set off there. Got Jeff Crow in full flight. He having a dart back to the bowler's end, and as you can see, very very tight indeed. So the field alteration now for the left-handed Richard Hadley. That's a better shot from Richard Hadley. That's uh, exactly where he likes it. And he opens the face of the bat. It skims through the covers. And that's four runs. It was a very urgent shout by Graham Diddy. Yes, there's a bit of movement in off the seam. Another good shout, that's out. Brendan <laughs> getting the ball well up to Richard Hadley. Comes in swing into the left hander. And getting him right up there in the block hole. A vital wicket this for England because this man can certainly change the course of a game if he's in for half an hour. But right up there, right under the boot, and really, I don't think a real problem for the umpire there. But this is Evan Gray, left arm spinner, who uh, can also bat. Oops, a daisy. Well, the edges count and. Uh, Sometimes get you onto the scorecard in a big way because that brings up the half century. For Jeff Crow, 50 off 77 balls. So in place of Embury, on comes Derek Pringle from the rugby stand end. One fifty up. Almost Neil Foster's good throw. It's beautifully concealed star ball, concealed until the last moment, that is. And then it was an equally beautifully controlled shot down the ground. Neil Foster to come on and try his luck again at the Kurtzler Road end. Caught. Well caught, too. I suspect it got more the bottom of the bat than the middle from Jeff Crow. But it still needed a good reflex action from Foster to get both hands up. He's taken that, and New Zealand now 165 for 7 with Crow his best ever score in a limited overs international. Ian Smith is the new batsman. 
absolutely first class reaction from uh, Neil Foster there and this game really very very well poised and Graham Dilling coming on at the Kirkstall Lane end Have to be quick this time. Richards, and he's gone. The fumble was there. It wasn't deliberate from Alan Lamb. It just bounced away, although he might be grinning now. But he was smart enough to recover very, very quickly. A little fumble by Alan Lamb there, but very quickly picked up, and he's got a marvellous arm. Although it's not the perfect throw. Beautifully picked up by Jack Richards and well out. 187 for eight, 17 to Gray and uh, Bracewell not out, no score. Now the New Zealanders have a problem. They must bat out their 55 overs. Now this is Richard Ellison and he's bowling to Gray. Lamb. What you don't really want. He did wonderfully well to get as close to it as he did. And Derek Pringle about the ball. Oh. Will it be wide or is it leg buys? Well, leg buys. In fact, five more runs were added. Gray finishing on 30. Bracewell on 10, and the New Zealanders on 217 for 8 off their allotment of 55 overs. That was a very good recovery from 54 for 4. Led by Coney, Jeff Crow by a long way top scorer. And onto the bowling, Ellison having at one stage taken 3 for 6 in 20 balls. He finished with 3 for 43, 1 for Dilly, 2 for Foster, and John Embry, as usual, a restrictive spell. So the England target was 218 to win this first one day at just a touch under four runs and over. Right then, here's the last ball of the first over. The bowler is Richard Hadley and the batsman Graham Gooch. Super shot. So we have Chatfield to Benson. That shot, half volley on off stump, and that's textbook stuff from Mark Benson. No, not too much movement, just stand still, flow of the bat, no need to run or anything. Very, very simple. Oh, it's going to be placed, and again, the ball faces away. Really, unless you feel like sprinting practice, there's no point in chasing. Oops. Over it goes. And somehow Richard Hadley gets through the Gooch defence. Fascinating game because not at any time had Richard Hadley looked to be really menacing. And he'd been hit for a number of four by Graham Gooch. And then suddenly he was through. Well, it's been a game of inside edges. We saw John Wright, inside edge, caught behind the stumps, and 38 for one. <laughs> Jeff Crow, the fielder. Listen, I think we'll probably see that this wasn't a terribly good run. That ball had hit. David Gow would have been run out naught. Here's Bracewell now, bowling off spin. And that's beautifully bowled by Bracewell. He thoroughly deserves that. 
frustrated Benson eventually into trying to hit him down the ground because he couldn't get him away anywhere else. And now in his fifth over, Bracewell has taken his first wicket. Splendid piece of bowling. Yes, that's the exact word, frustration. And he got a little bit of bottom hand in that, trying to hit it over the top. Didn't really get to it or time it. And just lobbed it straight into Ewan Chatfield's hands at uh, mid-on. Martin Crow to Lamb. might have been a little indication of what sort of form Alan Lamb is in. I just have a little feeling that uh, John Bracewell is frustrating David Gower, rather. <laughs> and Gower uh, gets him away eventually. Not quite where he intended. But it's still four. And suddenly there's a bit of a wobble and a bit of movement, and David Gower loses his off stop. See the dismissal again here, pitching round about off and hitting off. Not a bad delivery, but uh, say David Gower was very loose there when he played at that. Yes, and suddenly there's a bit of pressure back on England now. Happen to lose another wicket, and uh, he could be really in a bit of trouble. the way to get off the mark down the wicket magnificent stroke over mid off for six and in fact Gatting just rubbing his ribs there a little bit I think he just gave them a little bit of a stretch with that shot you can just see into the bottom rib there It's on both sides, Alan Lamb. So the 100 comes up off 178 balls. Oh, Gatting wants one. Lamb is late to start, has no chance of getting there. simple piece of fielding, it wasn't the fielding that brought the wicket, it was the misunderstanding between Gatting, who called, it was his call, and Lamb, who couldn't imagine that there was a run on there, and was terribly slow starting. Well, in terms of run-outs, it's 2-1 to New Zealand, because two of their batsmen were run out. struggling with that injury in the left side. So Gray to Pringle. Well, might have dropped him. Certainly turned it, and uh, yes, I think Ian Smith looks suitably apologetic. Yes, a little bit of spin here for Gray, and uh, definitely nearly off the face of the bat there. Derek Pringle trying to run it past the keeper. Ewan Chatfield uh, taking over from his captain at the top end. shot from Derek Pringle. The pause from the skipper Mike Gatting. Beautifully timed stroke and perfectly placed. 
Uh, Mike Gatting is going to face Evan Gray. And another one goes down. Three. Pringles have two goes and getting a chance. That was a fierce hit from Mike Gatting. Gray did wonderfully well to get both hands to it. And he really did crack that one. New Zealand wanted that desperately. Gatting was in tremendous form. Gray has got through his defence. And that has put New Zealand back on top. Yes, and uh, this was the thing. Gatting couldn't make any impression straight, and he tried to come inside that and hit it through extra cover. But it just straightened. And here you can see that bounces and turns a little. Just clips the top of the bail. 131 for five, 38.5 overs. Now Jack Richards comes in. Dicey position for him. change in the attack John Bracewell who bowled so very well in his first spell from the Kirkstall lane and coming back on trouble here for Richards terminal trouble And 43 for six England. No wonder the New Zealanders are looking happy. They've played it very well here today. Well, a touch of suicide here. Derek Pringle is off balance, looking the wrong way, and Jack Richards is hurtling down the wicket. I don't know what was said out there, but it's for sure there wasn't enough. Good throw and out by a mile. Embry is quite a strong hitter against the slow bowler and England are going to have to push it along they will need to play attacking strokes LBW Embury out LBW the seventh goes down for England New Zealand cock a hoop why shouldn't they be 144 for seven J.E. Embury LBW Bracewell zero and I would think we'll find he put his foot straight down the wicket, played round the corner, and it did absolutely nothing and would have hit the middle stump. Swept very fine, not even that despairing dive from Jeff Crow could save that. One of the very rare bad deliveries from John Bracewell. Well down the leg side. Richard Ellison. Straight down the ground and straight over the rope for six. Beautiful shot there's moving his feet down the wicket. Didn't go too soon. A lovely straight swing of the bat. the man at cover pouching that rather difficult chance away high to his right and New Zealand have England 162 for 8 and Derek Pringle had a little bit of luck but here it runs out cracking extra cover drive but in the air beautifully plucked out there by Ken Rutherford without any trouble at all. Uh, Neil Foster coming in and uh, a lot to do for England. They're going to pull this match out of the fire.
There's one there. They look for two, but it gets the outfield very quickly. And that's the problem. How ludicrous. So England are winning the run outs 3 2. And I just don't understand why batsmen don't realize how fast the outfield is, how quickly it gets to the man in the outfield. And what's more than that, Ken Rutherford is a first class fielder. Even more important, why don't they look at each other and know what's going on or shout very clearly? I mean, really, it's unbelievable for Test cricketers to be run out the way that one or two have been run out today. You see that? I mean, Neil Foster or somebody should be screaming no so loud that Ellison doesn't set off for the run, but unbelievable, there's only one man running every time a run out occurs. And now it looks very much New Zealand's game. And Richard Hadley bowling. It's his ninth over. Oh, beautifully bowled. Well, a better player might have got a touch on that. Certainly very, very near to everything. We're in the 49th over. England won 70 for nine. They want 218 to win this match. It looks very unlikely. They'll need heroics. It's Hadley to Foster. Over the go. Heroics came from Hadley. What a marvellous win for New Zealand. This is the perfect finish for a one-day match. The old leg stump Yorker and the perfect ball, 20 bit trying to strike the ball. And, of course, it was delivered by Richard Hadley, who balls that delivery particularly well anyway. Foster there, almost thinking he'd get into a good position to play, but no ball there. And really, a pretty poor batting performance by England. They can't say anything else about that. It's been unprofessional, and they really have thrown away a great chance of winning this game. Congratulations then to New Zealand and to their out cricket. The missed chance is not uh, crucially expensive. What can one say of that England batting performance? Distinctly uneven at times, absolutely frenetic. Some of those run outs defying belief. So, on to the bowling and the tightest figures returned by Richard Hadley and by Bracewell, two for 27 off the full allotment of 11 and uh, Gray getting two for 55. So New Zealand winning the first Texaco One Day International by 47 runs. And after it was all over, Brian Close, adjudicating the man of the match award, decided it should go to the one batsman who got past 40, Jeff Crow, who got indeed into the... Gatting was finished.